Italy. Hi, I'm Ed Robertson. Building a surfboard that's perfect for any kind of wave may sound like a tall order, but one young Australian was up to the task, and he's very happy with the result. Hi, I'm Kim Jagtiani. Watching out for the whales. These high-tech buoys off the coast of Massachusetts could help big ships from hitting these rare big whales. Avoiding collisions at all costs. This is Daily Planet. We've got another dynamite show today with Ed Robertson holding forward for Jay Ingram once again. I love the theme song. I just want to dance every time this theme <laughs> song's on. Uh, thanks, Kim. Jay will be back again Monday. I have failed to grow a beard, so they're bringing Jay back. <laughs> uh, it's been a blast. Today's show is no exception. Just mm -hmm. ahead, we'll meet a guy in Australia who's the person to call if you've got a poisonous snake on your property. Hmm. We're also going to meet a team that's sculpting incredibly lifelike horses from nine million years ago. I can't sculpt anything. <laughs> to lighten <laughs> the mood, <laughs> Alan Nursall <laughs> is going to make cheese curds on science and the city. Yummy. But first, we're heading down under to meet a surfboard inventor with a twist. Did you notice? I didn't attempt the Australian accent with the down under. I appreciate like that. Like yesterday, just for you. I appreciate Enough that. Enough about us, though. Here's the story. Oh, that looks good, mate. Look, we can go out over there. Jared Smith has been surfing with his dad, Max, for as long as he can remember. He's been going in the water since he was about two or three. They have dozens of surfboards, one for every kind of wave. Which one do you think, mate? Probably this one. And I'll take this one. There's so many different types of boards, and you need to suit your board to the surf conditions in order to perform your best. Usually, Jared has the right board with him, but not always. I could use a little bit of extra length. When he doesn't have the right board, either it's not a great ride, or he switches up his board. Easy enough when he can drive to the beach from his home in Wollongong, Australia. But not so easy when he's traveling abroad. That's why he's busy designing a board that he can take anywhere. If I could have a board that could suit all different wave conditions and come apart for travel, then that'd be really good. His idea? Split the board in two. Yeah, and if you're not sure of the conditions on the day, you wouldn't have to bring like five different boards. Say you lived a little bit distance from the beach, you could just bring a couple of tails and have a longer or shorter board. But his dad wasn't sure that was such a good idea. I thought it wasn't going to work at all. Well, we thought that once you cut a board, you couldn't put it back together again and uh, make it work. It would always have that flex in it. Jared's going to give it a try anyway, but first he needs to build a board. Luckily, Jared's dad has a friend who owns a surfboard shop, so Jared can test his design on a real board. I had a bit of uh, second thoughts about whether it would work or not at first, but once Jared got stuck into it and uh, came up with some really good ideas of how to join them together, I was convinced it would work. Whereabouts do you usually have it now? At 45 centimetres, I think. 45. Jared's idea cut the board about three quarters of the way down. The nose of the board is not actually touching the water when you're riding, so the main part that affects the performance is the bottom half. There are essentially four different kinds of bottoms, or tails, used for surfing. Here we've got a rounded square tail. It's the most popular type of tail at the moment because it suits, it goes well in all conditions. As you can see, it's a rounded square. Here we've got a round tail, the swallow tail. This is also heaps popular. It's shaped like a V and it releases the water out quicker. You can do looser turns. Yeah, it's a very popular tail. And here we've got the pin tail. It comes to a point in the end. It's for more bigger barreling waves. They have it on big wave surfers because the board sticks into the wave more so you don't slide out. What Jared wants to be able to do is attach any one of these tails to his board. But designing and cutting the board isn't enough. He needs a joint that's strong enough but light enough to hold up under heavy surf conditions. Uh, these are all the prototypes and models from the st early st development stages. This is the first mortise and tenon joint model just made out of styrofoam. This is when I was experimenting with cutting on an angle, but as you can see it didn't turn out too well, it was really dodgy. 
And here I was going to have twin mortise and tenons with two, two bars that go in instead of just one. But I didn't like that idea after a while either. Jared needs to put the joints through several tests to make sure they won't snap under pressure. I, t I did heaps of testing with, with like stacking bricks on joints, taking it out in the surf, hitting it with hammers and stuff. Quite a few did snap. Luckily, Dad's there to clean up the mess. Yeah, the broom was one of my major things I had to do each time. He'd uh, finish up and then go upstairs and lay on his bed, either frustrated or happy at what he's done, and then I'd put everything away and get things ready for next time. Jared's finally found a joint that works. All right, so this is the main... This slot sticks into this half, and then it's held in place by two carbon fiber hollow core bolts. The bolts are actually made out of epoxy resin, and they've got carbon fiber down the center and they're hollow, so they're extremely light. And they've got a slot for a 20 cent coin in the top, so you can just easily take it apart wherever you want. Turn that again. And now it's ready to go surf. Now he has a radically new board that's easy to pack in a car or take traveling. If I was traveling, I'd love to take this around with me. It'd be so much easier. I could just fit it in a four foot carry case. I might even be able to fit it in my hand luggage. Eventually, the board will need some tweaking to make it a little lighter. Right now, it's holding up well on the water. Jared is ready for whatever the surf can throw at him. 